Hello, everyone. Welcome to Breakout Investors. Today, we're meeting with the management of Heartcore, ticker HTCR. And specifically, we have Kana San, the company CEO, with us. This call's been recorded on the 1st of October and will be distributed via the Breakout Investor channel on YouTube. Um, check out our uh, content on, on YouTube, and we also have an, uh, an app and we write on Substack. Supporting materials for today's discussion will be on our app, and uh, we encourage you to join. A lot of the content is free. So we're going to start off the call by listening to a presentation from Kanasan, and uh, then we're going to do a short Q, uh, well, a Q and A session after that. Um, the time is all yours. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, my name is uh, Sumitaka uh, Kano. I'm a CEO of Hardcore Enterprise Inc. So I will share uh, well, on the screen just a moment. Uh, okay, here. So uh, let's go. So uh, we are a Hardcore Enterprise. We provide several software to enterprise customer. We always focus on the enterprise customer. So fortunately, we have over 900 enterprise Price customer, mostly in Japan, such as uh, Toyota, Honda, Sony, Panasonic, very famous company we have. And we, our strong point is we have 88% retention rate. This means once our customer decide to use our software, they never leave. And we uh, start to go IPO business, I explain you later. And uh, our revenue last year is uh, 20, uh, 22 million, but this year we almost we double. Uh, we established 2009 in Tokyo, Japan with the CMS, Content Management System, and we expand our business more and more. And 2022, uh, we became public in NASDAQ, the ticker code is HTCR. And after that, we start go IPO business. We take Japanese company to uh, US stock exchange, especially in NASDAQ. And last year, 2023, we acquired SigmaWay. This is San Francisco Bay Area company. And we also acquired Sabatini Global. This is a New York based company. So now we have a sales, sales force in West Coast and East Coast. And uh, this year, we established Hardcore Lubina Vietnam. Uh, this is a joint venture company uh, with uh, Lubina. Vietnam. So Lubina is a pretty big company. They have over 800 engineers. So we collaborate with them and we create a, establish a company in Vietnam. Um, we have uh, expand our business amount more. Um, uh, we have several software. One is a content management system. This is our main product. Um, that we have another uh, software we call digital transformation such as process mining task mining and add pa so all cms market is still growing worldwide so we keep invest this area so now we are planning to release new version software next year so it was a, uh, it's a great uh cms and the uh, ai driven so and uh, most uh, our important thing is go, go IPO business. Why I start this business? Because uh, when I decide to become public in Nasdaq, there are no information for Japanese company. There are many fake news. And somebody told me it takes two, over two years. No, it's less than one year. And another guy told me it costs up 5 million to 7 million. Uh, it is impossible to invest seven to uh, five to seven million that venture company, but actually not less than two million, one point several. So there are many fake news. Big, so that's why only one Japanese company listed in Nasdaq at that time. But uh, as you probably know, there are uh, over two hundred Chinese company listed in, in Nasdaq. What a quite difference. So I wrote a book. So the uh, blue wine is my book. It was number one selling Amazon Japan. So oh, this is how to become Nasdaq public company. And we start go IPO business. Fortunately, we engaged 14 customer. Four of them already start trade, uh, become public. And uh, typically we charge 500,000 upfront fee, include a uh, conversion 
a Japanese tax statement into US GAAP and uh, translate all document into English and uh, organize a team and write the uh, auditor, the lawyers, and also uh, help them to uh, finish audit. So uh, we uh, charge 500,000 upfront and after they start trade, we automatically get one to 3% warrant, um, depend on market cap. So recently, SBC Medical Group, they start trade. So we receive one, uh, no, 2.8, 2 point seven 2.7% warrant. So this means we uh, automatically receive over uh, 17 million US. This is 100% profit. And this is a great revenue. So our Q3 result will be uh, 22 to 23 million. And it, it was uh, bigger than last year, last entire year. And uh, profit will be uh, six to eight million. So this is also a great number. So uh, we can announce a very good number in the Q3. And we are now auditing, of course. So we will uh, report uh, mid of November. Um, so go up your business is quite well. So every week I have an interview with venture companies. So we have over 10 potential company pipelines. So we can, we try to engage uh, at least five clients within this year. Um, we, I also uh, mentioned about the Sigma ways we acquired 2023, their revenue is 10 million US and they're located in San Francisco Bay Area. They are providing engineer, engineering service and staffing service to uh, enterprise customer, such as MasterCard, uh, Walmart, uh, IKEA. So they're a big name they have. So they have a multiple contract, mul I'm sorry, multiple year contract uh, with these client. So especially MasterCard, they uh, have a five year uh, contract. So um, the revenue is uh, very stable. This is a uh, highlight in the Q2. Unfortunately, a Q1 revenue was 5 million. The Q2 is so a 4 million because uh, we pay back um, to Go IPO uh, client. So uh, to Go IPO client uh, give up the process to IPO. So unfortunately, so we pay back a hundred percent. It was one million. So our revenue getting down, but the uh, Q three number is great. Uh, it's about a twenty two to twenty three million just single quarter, and the profit is uh, six to eight million uh, profit. So we can announce uh, this great number. So uh, twenty twenty one, our revenue is only nine million. Twenty. 23, uh, 20, uh, almost two, uh, 22 million revenue. So this year will be over uh, 50 million. So this is great uh, progress for our company. So 2023, uh, 2024 is a historical number in part of all. So this is a uh, outlook. We grow through new customer, of course. And we grow through new technologies such as AI and digital transformation. And we grow through MA. We are very aggressive MA now. And our organic growth uh, is over 30%. And uh, also, we are doing in the Go IPO business. This is like a bonus for our, our company. So we engage 14 customers. Unfortunately, two, two of them um, give up the process, the four of them start trade, this uh, already start trade. Uh, and we will uh, engage additional five customer within this year. This is a long-term outlook. Why, I, why we do a GoIPO business? Because it is easy to find enterprise software client. So once our uh, client uh, become public, they automatically buy our enterprise software. One of them already buy over 1 million uh, software from us. So this is a synergistic uh, with our uh, software business. 
So this is investment highlight. We have 88% retention rate. So once our customer uh, use our software, they never leave. And we have over 40% market share in Japan. And we have uh, 210% growth rate. We have uh, 4% anticipated customer growth rate. And we are very aggressive M&A. Now we are uh, negotiating to acquire Japanese company, their public company in Japan, uh, Tokyo, in St Tokyo Stock Exchange. Uh, we cannot disclose now, but uh, already CEO agreed to sell entire his share to us. So oh, he has over 54%. So oh, we can acquire entire thing. Just we need uh, Tokyo Stock Exchange approval. It takes uh, uh, two months. So now it's in the process. We are waiting at Tokyo Stock Exchange approval. And we also uh, keep invest hum human resource in uh, United States. And we have over 900 enterprise customer and uh, in, in Japan and overseas, uh, outside Japan, we have only 25 customers, almost enterprise. So this is um, our um, com uh, brief company in profile. So last one, uh, this, this is a management team. Uh, I am a CEO of a Hardcore Enterprise Inc. My background is very unique. Uh, once I, uh, once I uh, graduate my university, I joined uh, Air Force because I watched a Top Gun first one. So it, uh, it was an amazing movie. So I really want to become a pilot. So I joined the Air Force and I became pilot. And after that, I created my own company and it was a, a sporting goods company. So I uh, create a big boom snowboard in Japan. And I joined, after that, I joined Brovision. It was a Nasdaq public company. And I learned a, a lot of things, how to create enterprise customer, how to create enterprise software. And uh, after leaving ProVision, I uh, established my own company. So I have over 20 years experience in software, uh, information technologies. So oh, I try to expand our business and I try to um, grow as much as possible this year and next year. Okay, so this is uh, our company uh, stories. So if you have any question, please ask me. Thank you. Thank you very much. It was a, it was a great presentation and uh, it, it's, yeah, great, great to hear how the, the business is coming along. We, we spoke a few weeks ago, but um, yeah, at the, at a conference, but I, I know that the audience and, and Chris, yeah, very useful for them. Um, I was thinking, Chris, in terms of like uh, thinking through the questions, we can more or less like work through. I think it's I think it's useful to separate out the two businesses and kind of focus questions on, on one aspect and then on the other aspect. Um, so if you had any questions about kind of the, the software, enterprise software, Chris, do you want do you want to go ahead? I've got plenty, but um yeah, if you want to kick us off. Yeah, absolutely. Um first, congratulations on DC. That very, very impressive. Uh Thank you. So um, I can see your software was very successful. What are the challenges that you see bringing software from? Your your sound is cutting off a little bit, Chris. But but as far as I understood it, you're essentially asking the software has been really successful in Japan. But I'm guessing the latter half of the question is what kind of gives you confidence that it can expand internationally as well. Is that is that right, Chris? Yes, exactly. Yeah, brilliant. So, uh, yeah, thank you very much. That, uh, that is a good question. So oh, we try to expand our business. So fortunately, we acquired Sigma Waves. They have um, in branch in Canada, United States, Mexico, and India, Netherlands, and Sweden. So oh, it's easy to access these countries. So we are now uh, hiring new sales. And now we uh, try to sell our software business. So oh, we expand our business more and more. So this is a uh, current uh, software um, divisions. 
So we expect uh, we will great success in 2025. We are now prepare everything and finish. So we are now uh, in the sales. So our sales cycle is uh, uh, six months to one year. It's a little bit long uh, because we focus on the enterprise customers. So we expect we were engaged uh, more clients in 2025 outside Japan. Just a, a follow-up question there. Is essentially 100% of the revenue, or at least the software part of the revenue, coming from Japan? Or, do, or is a small percentage international? Yeah, small part, percentage in, international. Only uh, um, less than 10%. Eight, yeah. seven or eight percent, yes. Yeah. Chris, any other questions you had? Well, indirectly, um, biggest driver company that say two years down the road, software. Sorry, Chris. I think. Maybe uh, if you didn't mind, why don't you put the questions in in the chat if you if you have any more questions, and I'll read them out. And then while you do that, in the meantime, I, I have a couple of questions which I'll go over. Um, you have a very high market share in Japan, um, as far as I understand it, it, particularly in CMS. You're playing against quite big players. Um, I, I think uh, yes. the Adobe's and and, and players like that. Um, what makes your CMS stand out from your competition? Why would why would people uh, come to you and then stay with you? Okay, so uh, it's a very uh, simple question. So uh, as a competitor, it's uh, include Adobe and Sitecore. They uh, can manage website content, include the social media, but our CMS manage everything. It's a digital data. Uh, Mm, so we can manage as a con uh, transaction. So uh, one of our clients, uh, Family Mart, it's a, uh, this is a convenience store. They are uh, providing um, like a, it's a Visa Touch or MasterCard Touch. It's a FamiPay. It's a payment gateway. So all payment transaction we uh, handle as content. So they manage entire payment uh, transaction. In, in our software, and we also providing um, very uh, secure. So most bank, include the Bank of Central Bank of Japan, they use our software. It, it, it is almost impossible to uh, crack our software. Very very secure. And uh, another one uh, thing. So oh, it's a huge access uh, website. Uh, for for example, it's a Japan Railway East Japan Railway. They have over uh, how much it's a 2000 million access a, an hour, just a single hour, 2000 uh, uh, million access. It's crazy uh, huge. So, oh, that means the 2 billion access. So, oh, it, we can um, handle this uh, huge access content. So, it's a very secure, robust, and stable. So oh, once our customer decide to use our software, they, they try to uh, combat to other CMS, but it's almost impossible. So they stay with us. This is yeah. the reason. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. Um, uh, next question, I, th I think, I don't remember if I saw it in this uh, presentation, but I was looking at an earlier presentation. It said you expect to grow 30% um, for this calendar year in, in your software side. And I wondered, what is the what is the breakdown of that? How much of that growth is driven by new customers? And how much of that growth is driven by customers you already have using more services? Okay, so 50, uh, no, uh, the, about the 40 to 50% 50 is a new customer. And uh, for, uh, over four, 50 customers uh, from existing customers, we combat of our on premise software to a cloud SaaS model, SaaS license. Mm. So it's a, a, a cross sale, we can uh, do a cross sale and upsell to existing customers. Yeah. Um, we've, we, we see you've got a very high market share in Japan. I wondered, do you have any goals in terms of what sort of revenues 
would you like to achieve internationally, maybe in the US? You know, what kind of market share are you aiming for within, you know, a few years? Do you have any um, goals that you could share with us? Yes, uh, we are now preparing a new CMS next year. So it to uh, focus on um, global market. So uh, we expect we will uh, have uh, over 10% share in the United States. It's uh, very difficult mm. to uh, get uh, um, over 50% because um, yeah. WordPress, it's an open source CMS, have over 50% market share now. So we try yeah. to uh, yeah, um, get uh, over 10%. Yeah. Um... Last one from me on, on the enterprise, at least for now. Um, you've acquired Sigma Ways, which, as I understand it, is largely a consultancy and it also does some IT services. Um, yes. Can you elaborate a little bit about what kind of cross selling, you know, how useful that is in terms of cross selling opportunities? And, and you know, I, I suppose they may even sell your services in the US, um, if, if I understand that right. But yeah, I'd love to hear more about that. Okay, so now uh, we uh, uh, try to cross sell, upsell to SigmaWay's existing customer, uh, like this, this client. And also SigmaWay has a many branch outside the United States. So we now hiring uh, new sales, these areas. And we try to sell our software in um, India, Canada, uh, Mexico, Netherlands, Sweden. And also uh, Sigma Weight, uh, uh, we acquired the Sabatini Global. It's, they are 100% sales um, companies. They do marketing, they do um, sales. So they focus on a uh, venture company. They're willing to uh, become public future. So oh, we engage the uh, several client uh, through the Sabatini Global. So oh, we have, I think this year it will be tough work to uh, sell our software through Sigma Weight, but the next year we expect we can sell more uh, mm. in 2025. So great. Um, I'll read out the question from Chris next which is, uh, what do you expect the biggest growth driver, oh, sorry, the biggest driver of the company two years from now? Will it be software or the IPO side? So uh, it, uh, these two years, I think uh, Go IPO is our uh, driver, growth driver. However, we focus on software. So we try to acquire software company as much as possible this year and next year. So this year we focus on uh, Japanese public company. So we have to pay a huge money to them. Uh, so oh, we focus on uh, Japanese public company, but the next year we try to acquire the US and uh, outside Japan companies. So our another growth engine is uh, M&A. Mm. Great. Um, so moving on to, I guess, the IPO side of the business. Uh, as I understand it, oh, let's see what Chris has asked. I'll, I'll ask this one. On average, from the time you make first contact with an IPO client, how long does it take you to fit, get to the finish line of going public? So uh, the shortest is about eight months. The longest is less than two years, 1.5 years. Yeah. After I engaged with us. Um, I I think you're the essentially you were the first, and I still believe you're the only, if if that's right, company in Japan who's helping Japanese companies to list in in the in the US. Um, can you no, talk we have about? A, uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead, please. Uh, no, no. So we have uh, several competitors in Japan, but they uh, have a, a certainly less experience. So okay. we are a leading company, of course. Yeah. Um, so if you do have competition in that side of the business, uh, do you have any idea of, well, how much market share do you have of, say, how many IPOs are there of which you're, you know, uh, 
you have 14 currently in the pipeline. I just wondered how much of the market would you estimate that re represents? Oh, that is a good question. Thank you. So oh, many Japanese companies willing to uh, become public in NASDAQ or NYC at this moment. So we try to engage as, as much as possible, but uh, well, fee is a, a little bit higher than other competitors. But we provide full service, include helping mm. uh, finish audit with a short time. So we don't fail, but 100% yeah. success we have. So or, uh, except the two companies, they decide to leave. One is, um, I can say, so or the company name, but the CEO and the arrested. But that's why they have to keep up the process. But uh, we guarantee uh, we can um, help them to ach um, yeah, achieve a goal IPO in until public. Mm. So uh, yeah, we will engage uh, at least uh, five to 10 customers each year, annually. Yeah. So this year we engaged three and we will engage additional five. So that's a total eight customer in 2024 we expect additional five to ten customer in 2025 yeah and in terms of how many companies you expect to make it from you know signing a contract with you to actually ipoing um i i suppose you you've you currently have a pipeline of 14 and two have opted to to withdraw so I wonder, do you, yeah. do you feel that's kind of a representative ratio moving forward that say, you know, uh, oh. a bit short of 10% of the companies may not make it um, there because of their choice? Is, would you say that's about fair? Uh, yes. Um, uh, it's difficult to uh, reply, but uh, uh, yes, um, depend on the uh, market condition, include uh, NASDAQ. NASDAQ always change. Sometimes it's easy, but sometimes it's very difficult. So mm -hmm. this at this moment, it's very, very difficult to get approval from NASDAQ. So uh, we have to wait. So oh, we now we have to, uh, we are waiting three company as they are waiting for NASDAQ approval. They apply everything, they uh, apply allocation list. So they got uh, clearance from SEC. So we expect uh, additional three companies start trade this month, but mm. nobody knows. We are just waiting in Nasdaq. Yeah. In term, so so that investors can think about, um, can, can forecast that growth. I wondered, mm -hmm. each IPO will be different in, in terms of size, in terms of yeah. uh, the revenue that you would receive from it. But I wondered, you know, so far you've had three IPO and I think you've collected 18 million of revenue from those three IPOs. So I wondered, would you say that, you know, somewhere in the region of 6 million per IPO would be fair or is it just really, just, they're just way too different each one and, and you just you certainly couldn't apply any kind of average. I just wondered whether how you thought about that or if you couldn't, if even if you couldn't, Think of an average. I, I wondered if you could at least share um, a range of what the IPOs might might go for. Okay, so there are no um, uh, the average. So depend on the company revenues. One of our clients, they have uh, about five hundred million revenues. Another company, it's only uh, ten million. So market uh, market cap uh, will be big difference after uh, IPOs, but mm. we try to engage uh, good customers. Uh, uh, they must must have good customers, must have good uh, software, must have good revenues. So we are now trying to engage over 50 million revenues company only. And we are now um, finalize a new engagement letter with a 2 billion revenue company now so mm. it, it's a pretty good companies sorry the the one that's uh two billion you're in early discussions with that company is that right 
Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes. Uh, no. 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 Uh, this is a new new customers, new uh, new company. Yeah. We try to engage now. Okay. Hey, the 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 current minimum revenue was was fifteen million. Is that right? One five million. Yeah, uh, no, 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 50, five, zero, 50 million. Okay, five, from zero. Now. Yeah. But yes. Okay. Um, I wondered if you could explain um, the situation with uh, SBC Medical. Um, I think there was a situation, and I don't remember precisely what happened. I wonder if you could talk about it. I think you had to pay a referral fee to kind of sell the warrants. I wonder if you can elaborate on that. Yes, uh, thank you. So we engage um, SBC Medical Group in uh, 2020, uh, end of 2022. So it takes uh, one, uh, one and a half years. But uh, they start trade uh, two, two weeks ago. Um, they recharge 2.7% uh, warrant. Uh, but we have to pay 0.8% warrant. So we already sold 2% warrant to Japanese investor, and we already received 9 million cash, but we have to pay uh, at, at, uh, almost 4 million referral fee. So um, one company uh, introduced SBC Medical Group and arrange to um, our Go IPO business. So yeah. we already pay it, four million to yes them. Yeah, is it is it typical for you to pay um, between a third and uh, or around that that region in, in a sort of referral fee for every IPO? Uh, yes, yeah, I'm not a hundred percent, but uh, most are uh, fifty percent. We pay a referral fee. Okay. Yeah, so 50% would have a referral fee and 50% there would essentially be no expense on the, on the income statement. Is that right? Yes, correct. Okay. Yeah. Um, let's see. So, so far you have, you're, you're, you're close to about 10 million revenue in, in H1, you know, the first half of this year. Um, and you're already guiding for 20 million plus um, for this next quarter. Uh, yeah. Assuming you, you still have three or four IPOs by the end of 2024, 20, I think, that you're hoping will go through, um, which is obviously, uh, you know, if, if they none go through versus if they all go through, that's a pretty big wide range of the revenues you'd expect mm -hmm. for the year. But um, yeah, I just wanted to kind of point out that if if they did go through, or at least a, a portion, you could be seeing, say, twenty million revenue or something like that for 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 the for the last quarter of the year. So that would be one reason I think that investors are a little bit kind of nervous about the company is because you know you have a, a relatively steady revenue base and then you have really wild fluctuations um uh, you know on on top of that because the, the the amount of revenue and profits you get from this IPO business is um so large com, com, you know are, are in comparison to the rest of the business um just just that alone would would go from h1 being you know in the region of 10 million to the latter half of the year being you know closer to closer to 40 million or or more um so that's that's really a a big difference and i i guess the investors would be nervous that that's just a one off and that it's not a sustainable business so i just wondered if you can I know you've mentioned before that you aim to maybe add five to ten IPOs a year. I just wondered if you would like to elaborate on that and just share what gives you the confidence that this, these IPOs aren't just a, a one-off and that it's a sustainable business moving forward. Uh, yes, uh, that's good. Good question. But uh, nobody knows the NASDAQ conditions <laughs> at this moment. We uh, apply everything and we have to wait. But uh, we expect uh, three of uh, our client uh, start trade within uh, this year, 2024. Um, the, uh, they bring us uh, over 15 million uh, warrant revenues. 
from uh, uh, in twenty twenty four, and we also engaged uh, uh, five additional clients uh, within this year. They give us a uh, five hundred thousand upfront fee. This means a two point five million uh, revenue they bring us. So we can say it it's almost the same number in the Q three. Uh, Q four is almost same number in Q three. So uh, Q3 is a uh, 22, 22, 23 million we are now uh, auditing. So mm. uh, we can say the accurate number, but uh, we turn to profit in Q3 already. So uh, there are no concern the cash position, there are no concern um, burning cash. And the Q4 is just, just a bonus. So uh, maybe we can say the accurate number in now, but uh, Q3, yeah, Q4 is almost same in the Q3 number, 20, uh, roughly about over 20 millions. Yeah. And that would be assuming the three IPOs go through that you hope go through. Is that fair? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. But uh, it, in, I think it uh, takes only uh, one to two months for getting NASDAQ approval. That's maximum. Okay. Yeah. So we already apply in uh, last month. So there are yeah. no concerns. I don't think uh, we can do in uh, within this okay. year. Yeah. All right. I've got a question come from Matt on the chat, which says, uh, just to confirm the referral fee, is it unrelated to the IPO client and yourself, uh, i.e. both third party investor in warrant and introducing party? Mm -hmm. I couldn't understand yes. the explanation. Yeah. Okay, so uh, different fee. So uh, the company or individual uh, person uh, introduce uh, us. So we pay j just introduction. We pay tiny money, but they help us to engage. Uh, so we pay at least uh, a third of our warrant, thirty three percent maximum. So all uh, depend on the, uh, yes, uh, situations. So uh, not everything that we uh, pay. So SBC med Medical Group, so we pay uh, almost 30% warrant. Mm. Um, so it uh, uh, depends on the situation and the conditions. So we can say, but uh, um, if uh, somebody help us to engage and uh, the Go IPO client, we will pay. But uh, uh, not upfront, upfront, just, just warrant. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'd like to move on to kind of the balance sheet and uh, that type of side of the business. Could you talk about, okay. um, you know, how your cash looks, you know, what how your kind of debt and liabilities look? Okay, so uh, we have uh, over three million cash in the bank, and uh, yeah, Q three number is uh, Q three is already turned to profit profitable, so or entire this year. Um, the, uh, so there are no concern about the cash. Uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> there are no concern about the cash position. Um, that there are no concern about about our uh revenues so oh, it's going well mm. after uh, q3 and would you like to talk about ownership i know that you own a majority stake in the business but the management as a whole is also very invested so if you'd like to talk to that okay so i have over 50 percent uh shares 50 point uh four percent i think and our um uh, director uh, one of our director, he has 10% shares. So uh, internally, we have 65% shares. Yeah. That's very high. Um, so I, I think yes. I, th I think it's it's easy to see that the business kind of means a lot to you and, and you're, you have a great deal of confidence in it. Um, yes. Great. Uh, Chris or Matt, do you have any other questions? Chris is typing. Okay. 
What is more thrilling? Flying a jet, snowboarding a top tier mountain, or grossing almost 18 million from an IPO? <laughs> Good question, Chris. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, uh, repeat it again. So the question is, uh, what is more thrilling for you? Uh, flying a jet as a pilot, mm -hmm. snowboarding on a top tier mountain, or grossing 20 million from an IPO? Oh, sorry, not 20, I mean 18 million. <laughs> Yes, uh, I always enjoy my business, and uh, but uh, yeah, we I focus on uh, go IPO business uh, this year. So this year is a historical uh, number in of hardcore life, uh, hardcore histories. So we focus on uh, go IPO now. Yeah. Um, perhaps one more uh, question that I just came to me was, I think you mentioned a potential acquisition, um, first in Japan that you're thinking about, and then, um, you know, you mentioned that you might want to acquire companies in the US. Would you like to kind of talk about the strategy? I know you can't mention what specific company it is in Japan, but, you know, broadly speaking, how do you see these acquisitions fitting into your company? What kind of need are they solving? Um, are they just there to kind of gain more clients or to uh, build your expertise and so forth or solution? Okay, so well, we need good technology. So the uh, target company must have good technology or good uh, customers. So in a Japanese company, they have a very good uh, customer and very good technology. They are leading company of um, recommendation on the personalization engines. So we, uh, it, it, their technology is great synergistic with our uh, CMS software business. So we are now under negotiation. But uh, for the next year, so we try to acquire a U.S. company. It uh, they have, uh, they must have good technology or good customer for site. I don't care the uh, revenues. We can sell, uh, upsell, and cross sell to our existing customers. Mm -hmm. So uh, we choose. We we have to select the good companies. Yeah. Right. Well, uh, that's all the questions from me for now. So uh, unless Chris or Matt have any last questions, um, I'd just like to really thank you for your time. It's been, uh, yeah, it's been great to hear from you. I, I do personally think this is a, a great opportunity and um, one that I need to quickly finish my due diligence on as quickly as I can, I think, because uh, it looks like an, an exciting pivot point, I would say. Um, yeah, any any last words, Chris? No, all right. Thank you very much. Uh, it's been a pleasure. And um, yeah. yeah, just uh, remember, this is a Breakout Investor podcast. And uh, for any of our listeners, you know, we hope you can join us soon in our community. And, and thank you so much, Kano-san, and I hope we chat again soon. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Some or all the speakers may maintain positions in the securities discussed in this podcast. The views of this podcast expressed are those of the speakers, not break investors. This podcast is for informational purposes only and should not be relied upon as a basis for investment decisions. Neither break investors nor any of its affiliates makes any representation or warranty expressed or implied as to the accuracy or completeness of the statements or any information presented by this podcast and any liability, including in respect of direct, indirect, or consequential loss or damage, therefore is expressly disclaimed. No one on this podcast is an investment advisor. No one is providing investment advice. Before investing in any company's stock, you must do your own research. Thank you for listening.